Okay, welcome back. So we're continuing from where we stopped yesterday. Now today we want to solve a very simple example. We want to model a naturally flowing well. So um, yesterday we looked at the introduction, we looked at the environment and how all those things all these ones will be filled when we set up our module here. So let us start. I double click this and this window pops up. The well I have is an oil well. And I want to use the black oil simulator. Then I'm using a single stage separator. In fact, I want these values to remain this way. I don't want to change anything. Because it's just a very simple demonstration of a naturally flowing well. We're not doing anything complex. Um, everything will just remain this way. And then since it is naturally flowing, our uh, artificial lift method is none. That is the most important thing. The lift method is none. Because it is naturally flowing. And then my well is a producer, not an injector. And I'm using tubing flow. So all other things will remain as they are. So I've pointed out some things you need to check. If you're using, if your well is an oil well or a gas well, retrograde condensates. And then if you're using a black hole simulator, and then this one if your well is a producer or an injector a water injector you need to check those things then if it's natural flowing you leave this at none so these are one two three four very important and this one five now this one's also important is your well is a well is it a caged oil well or is there any mechanism for sound control you need to specify this ones too but today we're just doing something simple everything remains at the default so we continue now the next thing to do is just input the pvt data and then um i add all like this and this pops up so i have um my um the well i was given to analyze the gas oil ratio is 400 standard standard cubic feet per stb and then the oil gravity excuse me all gravity is 40 api then my gas gravity is um 0 0.8 as a spe specific gravity i have a specific gravity of 0 0.8 then my water salinity is 10000 ppm okay that's that 10000 ppm part per million you know what that means okay so you can use that in percent or you can use that in kg per kg or specific gravity but we want to leave it at this let me leave these correlations at this and then um the mole percent um, the impurities I have no impurities in my system so we can just do that okay I should take care of that so next thing to do is um we come here I will click this so now we have this we have done validate cancel reset Earl um, these are just keys calculate plot test data sensitivity export report transfer data sun failure if you have sun control mechanism there's, there'll be something here okay but we have um this is the model and global variable selections there is one model so which one do you want to use now you need to know the effects of all the ones now on Vogel you know when you use the Vogel equation for calculation and you should know when to use composite you should know when to use Dasi, Fedkovic, uh, Multi-Red Fedkovic, Jones, Multi-Red Jones and all the ones these are things that help you to calculate your IPR your IPR because that's where we are uh, IPR so now now um, PI you know the formula for PI this is the simplest by far the simplest but how can you calculate your PI if you do not have data flow data so to calculate PI you know the formula is um, the flow rate all over the pressure drawdown so if you do not have data for that then you do not go there Vogel you use Vogel when um, the bubble points pressure, when your reservoir pressure is greater than the bubble points pressure, you use Fedkovic when the bubble point pressure is um, lower. Uh, sorry, your reservoir pressure is lower than the bubble points pressure. Then you Darcy, that is when you have scale, you want to use the Darcy and then the interscan by N. And then you need to specify these two. Now, the reservoir pressure, what is the pressure of your reservoir? Okay. Uh, question I have, we have that the reservoir pressure is at 3500 PSIG. So you can actually change this to PSIA and all those other ones. Like I said, I'm using the oil field unit. That's why everything here is oil field unit. 
okay our temperature reservoir temperature is 250 degrees Fahrenheit and then the water card initial water card is um, zero you can use it at zero percent okay so that's what we have and I want to enter the skin by on and then I'm using the default the one Clifford division partial penetration skin so now I input the data see I clicked here this brings me here and then this brings up this other window now this is where I enter the Desi reservoir model in order to calculate use Desi formula to calculate the pressures and then use that to calculate the IPR you need to input this data as required for Desi um, to use the Desi formula so the reservoir permeability was the permeability of my reservoir you need to input that I'm told the reservoir permeability is 300 milli Desi and then the reservoir thickness is um, 100 feet then the drainage area of my reservoir is um, 2500 acres then the dirt shift factor okay um, I'm given here to be 31.6 but if you do not have this data then you can calculate the dirt shift factor so you see it's just um, the zone data so you need the length and the width and the distance so if this is your wall what's the distance to the boundary the reservoir boundary this distance and then distance of your will, the length and the breadth. Okay. Anyway, I have the value already, so there's no need to calculate that. Again, what's the wall boundary? Just notice that this is in feet. This is in feet, so you can actually you no. Know, so let's just leave it in feet. I'm told my reservoir wall boundary just is um 0.435. So you can look at the inches equivalent of this to know how large your wellbore is. That's about 5.22 inch. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's small anyway. Because uh, most uh, wells are completed at about... Okay. So we just leave that at that. So that is that. And then the next thing naturally is just to enter the skin. Remember I chose enter skin by an. That means I've already calculated my skin. So I just input the value of my skin here. Then my skin I'm told is there. That means the wall is not even damaged at all. So if I come here, you notice that this also has changed to green. Just initially red. So meaning that my data that it is okay. Okay. So now the next thing to do is just to calculate and then this brings this up. So this is my IPR, the IPR plot using Desi. So this is the absolute open flow potential. The absolute open flow potential is um the maximum flow rate, the greatest flow rate, the maximum flow rate you can have if sorry, if the pressure dropped down was the reservoir pressure. Meaning that um if the pressure, the reservoir pressure, sorry, the um, flowing bottom hole pressure you're using is equal to this. And this will be what you'll have. The maximum flow rate you should have, and then uh, because of some factors, this is not very feasible. That's why we have some of these things. Now, if you look at this curve, you notice that um, these things are not coming up. So, next thing, you just come here and then mouse read out. If you show that, and then done. So, anyway, you bring this up, you can you see this coming up. This value here, just moving this up here, okay. So that's useful if you're to read some data here. Sometimes you might be asked, what is the flow rate when the pressure is up 700 PSIG? So you come here to 700 PSIG, you follow this line. So as that. So I should give you what it wants. Okay. So now the X value there. An X value that should give you the flow rate at that particular pressure. Okay. So now I said at the maximum, the absolute open flow potential is the maximum flow rate you can have when the pressure drops down. When your wall flowing pressure, flowing bottom hole pressure is zero. That should explain itself. When the flowing bottom hole pressure is zero. So you have that. Then the productivity index, you know. That has been calculated already. Oh, and then the skin, our skin, we entered is zero. 
Okay, so I think that should be enough. Yeah, and actually do some analysis. We have rates here. Then we have pressure here, so you can change these um, variables. And then decide to plot IPR curve. Okay. So you can look at most of these things, test data results. And this brings up the actual result, the rate of a pressure. And then you can change the labels you're using. This is the plot title. You can change it to something else. You can change these labels. But those ones are not really important for analysis. So we just click finish and then we go. So we're done with this. So you click done. But something left. Okay. So you see this. The plot is here. But we've not actually modeled our equipment data. So we go next to that. But the easiest way to do that is just you select all and you deselect the surface equipment because we don't want to use surface equipment and then you edit this now we want to model a very simple uh, well our well will be a vertical well so our measure depth at the surface is zero and zero now at a certain depth called um, 12,000 that is where our well is our reservoir is at 12,000 feet and then um, our TVD is also 12,000 there 12,000 so you can plot this and look at what is happening so you see our wall is a vertical well vertical vertical wall so that's that and then you click done then here this is the down all equipment so the Xmas tree the first equipment is the Xmas tree looking at it from top to bottom then the next naturally Sorry for that. Should be your kissing. <laughs> Sorry for that. Next one is the kissing. The next one should be the tubing you're using. If you have some restrictions, you have to put this one. If you have SSSV, that is subsurface safety valve, and you have to indicate that for the tubing. If you have some restrictions, so. But we're just doing a very simple model, so we need just the casing and the tubing. Now, our casing internal diameter is um, 3.96. Oh, sorry. Let's use the tubing before the casing. Oh. So our tubing internal diameter is 3.96, as I'm approximately four feet. Okay, and then our casing um, internal diameter is 8.3. Oh, sorry. That's the measure that I'm not missing this. So our Tubing is set at 11,000 feet. Sorry. And then this is set at 12,000 feet. Then our casing internal diameter in, in inches is 3.96 inches. Then wall that of the casing the diameter is um 8.3. Okay. I should solve a problem. Just that. You can use this labels here. So you can actually call this one casing. Okay, and then uh, I call this one tubing, and then um, I call this one. Let's just call it X master. X master. Okay. Okay. So we continue. Now this is our geothermal gradient. At the surface, the temperature we have is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. While at our depth objective, that is 12,000, the temperature we have is um, 250. Remember, we used 250 when we were modeling this, the IPR data, 250. And then I'm told the overall transfer coefficient is 8. Okay. Transfer coefficient is it. So we're done with this. Let's click done. And then um, the input parameters we have the compressibility, compressibility for water, gas. Well, let's just leave this one set the default values. So you can check the summary and then you draw the down all equipment. So this is how it looks like. This is our tubing and this is our casing. This is our exposed tray. Then we can look at measure depth and activity, measure depth and activity, all the ones.
So we just done, done, done. And then um, I think we're done with the modeling of the system. So let's look at and see if our model is actually running. So that is what I did. I chose calculation and I want to check the IPR and the VLP cuff. Is it variable? So you can use any of this. R. So what's the top node pressure? Our top node pressure is at 250. And the water cut is zero. Because um, there's no water at all in our system for now. So we continue this. I don't have data for this. I just want to check if my system. I don't want to do any sensitivity analysis. If you want to do the analysis, then you have to choose this one. Anyone. You can check the effect of reservoir pressure, check the effect of permeability, the effect of the reservoir thickness, the effect of temperature, the effect of the gas ratio, effect of skin, and all these ones. What effect will they have on a system? But you're not doing anything like that. We just want to check if our well is flowing. Now, this is the window. So I just click calculate and see what happens. Now, the calculation has elapsed. Now, if you look at this, I have data here. Since I have data here, it means that my well is naturally flowing. Another way, okay. So, if you look at this data, you look at uh, liquid rate. This is what I'm producing per day. This is the gas rate, and this is the oil rate I'm producing from this well. So, I'm not producing any water. Good luck. It's good for me. So, solution to the pressure is this. Then, well head pressure is this, and all those ones. So you can actually confirm this by plotting. System plot. So, you see this. Now, at the point, this is our vertical lift, the red line is the VLP cuff while the green line is R. The green line is our IPR cuff. Now the point at which these two lines intersect is our production um signifies that the well is producing. So at the point which they intersect the pressure I mean the flow rate at that particular point gives us our maximum um, our flowing rate. And then the pressure at that point gives us our pressure too. So now you're plotting liquid rate, but let's just look at oil rates. So I want the oil rate, not the liquid rate. So done. Then this is how it looks like. So this is our rate, the maximum rate. So let's bring up the causal so that we can see what's actually happening there. So at this point, you see our rate. Look at the x value. And the y value, the x value gives us the rate, while the y value gives us that. So you see, our x value is 2136, and that's the flow rate. Then the pressure is 3463. That's our, so our well is actually naturally flowing. So that's all about how to set up a naturally flowing well. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, next time, we'll do some complex analysis. We'll analyze these things and check the effect of pressure and other things. On this well and how it will be varying how it will be depleting the effect it will have when it will cease flowing and what we can do to revive the well so thank you very much for watching see you some other time